Hello and welcome back to Star Wars The Old Republic and Zanash once again. Oh yeah, it's been a long time, an absolutely enormous amount of time in fact. It's been years since we have visited this wonderful, wonderful denizen of the dark side. And uh, yeah, we have a number of new improvements going on here in the game. So uh, first of all, they have two different specializations that you can choose from. You can actually choose from uh, any number of um, specializations on your same side. So if you're playing Imperial, you can choose any of them, as far as I'm aware. Um, and then, on the other hand, you can choose between these two different combat styles. So, for example, if you want to use Marauder style, which is the secondary specialization that I chose, then you can then use two lightsabers in each hand and my head cannon or maybe the cannon specifically that i like to kind of go for here is that maybe zanash you know splits his dual saber in half and then he can use them in each hand you know that's the kind of thing that i was kind of going for there anyway they have redone the talents as you can see right here which is actually really really nice they've made hatred much more fun in my opinion Although, to be fair, I don't know whether I really understood how to play it beforehand anyway. Also, the max level cap is now level 80. And we are 75. So we're obviously going to have to do some missions. And we have some missions available here. As you can see, we have the Cold Moon's Tidings and the Lingering Darkness. I don't think I actually finished this up, which is uh, kind of my fault, to be honest. Because uh, this was something that needed to be finished in the previous uh, little content update and then I think we are maybe going to be able to get something from our ship but let's just go in here first and see what's going on as always if you want to see um, our, you know the other characters or more specifically if you want to see Zaylan who is our Jedi Knight our light side Jedi Knight then uh, by all means let me know but obviously I don't know whether I've even gone through the Knights of the Eternal Throne or any of that stuff with him uh i think i did yeah i think i did so may maybe maybe I'm, I'm not entirely sure but we'll we'll see we're here now tell me what this is all about as i told you on viking space dock tenebrae's last gruesome weapon he sought immortality but only his endless spite survives now. I was his most powerful servant once. His wrath. But I learned of his true nature and plotted his downfall for centuries. Ultimately, I saw what had to be done and betrayed my empire in order to destroy its creator. That is how I came to fight alongside Kira. We fought the Emperor's servants constantly for years. We even thought we'd beaten him alongside my master. Then Yavin 4 happened. And Valkorion. I received guidance from an old ally. Instead of seeking out our enemy in his current shell, you, as it turns out, we sought a different target. Tenebrae hid his original body where no one could harm it. As long as that body remained in stasis, the galaxy's greatest evil could never truly be killed. Unless we destroyed Tenebrae, the fight against Valkorion would never really be over. Since Valkorion is gone, I assume you succeeded. We did. As we later learned, we destroyed his first body just as you purged the last vestige of his twisted spirit from your mind. That is when his final weapon was unleashed. A Sith ritual, carved into his very flesh, unleashed an ancient plague from every molecule of his decaying corpse. We were both knocked out cold, comatose for more than a year. Satil Shan was the one who finally pulled us out of that nightmare, and started a new one. Like you, Kira and I have both been vessels for a portion of Tenebrae's power. It acted as a sort of vaccine. But Satil had no such protection, nor did any of her followers. Within days, they were all laid low, trapped in a nightmarish slumber. In helping us, 
they are knowingly doomed themselves. What does any of this have to do with me? The infection is worsening. There is a darkness growing among the afflicted. We can feel their minds connecting, communicating. We're afraid they might be merging somehow. Merging into what? Another Valkorian? Is this plague bringing him back somehow? It's too early to make that conclusion. Whatever it is, it is immensely dangerous. We must stop it. How? We loaded Satil and all of her followers onto a transport to keep them quarantined, along with a few medroids to tend to them. The transport is programmed to fly a random course through unsettled sectors of the Outer Rim, all weeks away from civilization. I can send a signal to alter the course, bring it to another empty system that's closer so that we can meet it in a shuttle. We board the ship, and connect our minds with yours through the Force. Together, we will face this entity and purge it from existence. And if we cannot purge it, then we destroy the transport and hope we've ended the old monster's schemes forever. We should just destroy the transport now. Send it crashing into a star. And kill Master Satil and all of her students? Not a chance. If there's any hope of saving them, we have to try. I must agree. We should try to develop a cure for the disease before destroying it. We cannot know for certain this will be the only outbreak. It's gonna take a while for the transport to come back into range. Then we should stay here until it does. If you require any assistance in the meantime, don't hesitate to ask. Not so fast. I'm not fighting the Republic or the Jedi, so if that's what you want, definitely hesitate to ask. Ignore her. If necessary, I can slay enough of your enemies for both of us. Ugh. She grows on you. Eventually. I actually think that that is a pretty wonderful relationship that these two have garnered. Obviously, it is very much a case of, uh, I don't know, camaraderie. Maybe it's camaraderie. Maybe it's romance. I'm actually not entirely sure at this point, but that sounds like a pretty fun idea, <laughs> if, if it is even. Anyway, we have um, the ability to now return to Alliance Operations. This is, you know, I actually forgot how good the game is at telling stories i really did i actually forgot about that i mean as i say it has been years after all so i guess it kind of makes sense right anyway the task at hand Commander, looks like our new friends from the Hand have just entered orbit. I'll get them cleared to land right away. Darth Knox. I am Darth Riffix. I believe the Empress told you to expect me. You'll be the Hand's liaison to the rest of the Empire. Precisely. Competition for the role was heated, as I'm sure you can imagine. I am proud to have stood above all others. I'll have my shuttle bring me to the surface directly. I always prefer speaking in person. Face to face at last. Your hollow does you no justice, my friend. Welcome to Odessan. We are honored by your visit. And I am honored to be your guest. Permit me to be direct. My duty as liaison is to facilitate your operations as best I can. My success is judged by your success. I will not profit from obstructing or undermining you. Much as I savor them, deception and manipulation are not among my objectives here. I will relate my Empress's desires to you and your accomplishments to her. Anything you require of the Empire's resources, I will obtain. 
I shall be your ally, your spokesman, and I hope your confidant. You have my vow on it. I look forward to working together. As do I. Now, if I may impose upon you a bit more before we delve into official matters, I would love a tour of your base. The stories I've heard. One of my people can show you around. Find me when you're ready to focus on our work. As you wish. Your base is truly impressive. You must be very proud. Are you ready to focus now? Yes, let's. The destruction of the Meridian Complex on Corellia continues to accelerate our war efforts. We've won decisive victories in the Bormir, Atrevis, and Anoat sectors. The Republic is reeling. Perfect conditions for the Hand to press the advantage. Perfection can't be rushed. We'll rejoin the fight when I'm sure we're ready. Of course. To that end, we are solidifying supply lines and secure communications between Odessan and the rest of Imperial space. A full detachment of Imperial troops is already en route to serve at your command. Assault troops, security personnel, patrol ships, and so on. Now then, there is one other matter that needs your attention as we spin up the hands day-to-day -day operations. As promised, your previous holdings as a member of the Dark Council have been transferred to the Hand for your direct control. This includes the Imperial Reclamation Service, as well as Moff Pyron's Silencer Fleet. That said, the Silencers are currently engaged in key operations along the front line. I believe they belong under your capable command, but Darth Krovos would prefer they were allocated for continued use in her operations. Your preference? Moff Pyron may continue his current assignment for the time being, but when I call, I will expect them to answer. I will be sure Krovos and Pyron both understand the situation. I believe that concludes our business for the day. Do you require anything else? Any word on Darth Malgus? I haven't seen him since Corellia. You are not alone in that. No one has seen him since the battle. It's all rather mysterious. Perhaps he was more badly injured than anyone knows. Or perhaps he's gone rogue again. But surely that's not possible. I will not return. I will not return. I will not Once again, your vital signs have elevated far beyond ideal values. I am concerned that these episodes pose a risk of permanent damage. Then stop them. I have already removed all physical modifications related to your loyalty assurance protocols. These hallucinations are the result of psychological manipulation. To correct such potent mental conditioning is beyond my program scope of practice. Honestly, I am unaware of any technique capable of editing the pathways of your mind so extensively. I have heard of one possibility. Set course for Dantooine. Right, so Darth Malgus is still kicking around. I'm very pleased to see that, actually. I, I actually find him like a... I don't know. I think he's a pretty fun character, to be honest. Anyway, there we go. We've actually already reached a level 76, and they actually introduced a battle pass as well, which I always find is kind of... I don't know. Sometimes they're cool, sometimes they're not so cool. It very much depends. So far, I haven't really found it to be amazing, but obviously I haven't really played the game 
for a significant amount of time. I've literally played it for uh, a grand total of, what, 20 minutes? I mean, not even including this episode, just literally sorting out my UI and everything because there was this window that pops up, this welcome window that pops up when you first load into the game. And the, the funny thing about that is that they place that window over the place where you close it. So you actually have to edit your UI to be able to access the button. It's really weird. I know, I know. Anyway, signal from noise. Let's go and meet with Kira and Scourge once again. Ah! We've waited too long as it is. Something is wrong. I'm sure of it. Smashing up the place isn't going to solve anything. We'll find the ship. It's going to be all right. I take it there's no sign of the transport with Satil and her followers. Nothing. It isn't responding to our signals. And we've already checked the next scheduled stop. No sign. Which leaves just about two or three hundred systems to search. There must be another way! Let's start by not breaking anything. This furniture wasn't free. Go easy on him. It's been hundreds of years since he felt real emotions. He's a bit out of practice. All we can do is start searching from the ship's last known coordinates, which, for us, could take forever. So we get an expert. <laughs> We'll send T7 out with an escort and all the probe droids we can find. They'll cover more ground and sort through sensor readings faster than we ever could. T7 works his astromech magic, crunches the probe data to pick up a trail, and we find our missing ship in a matter of days or weeks, instead of years. What are we waiting for? Get it done. Your house, your probe droids. Just seem polite to ask first. That's everything settled then. As soon as we get coordinates, you'll be the first to know. Don't worry. Your furniture's safe. It'll calm down in a bit. You know, I don't actually mind about the furniture that much. I was literally just saying that for fun, you know, because it's a funny thing to say. Sometimes I like to say funny things as, well, as quite a few people do, no doubt. Anyway, there we go. There's another half. I mean, how, how am I leveling so fast? That is absolutely crazy. Okay, so now all we need to do is oh, apparently click launch to begin the mission or I can just run over here. I'm actually not entirely sure why I'd want to click launch, but I guess it would just take you there instantly. You don't demand anything, Jakaya. Certainly not from him. If you're risking your life out there, I'll demand what the clan requires. What's going on? It seems I'm a child in need of a parent. You're Mandalore, the Avenger. You have responsibilities to all of us. So you often tell me. Who's this? Jakaya Ordo. One of my best. He managed to avoid my notice for too long, but now I've put him to work. Though I'm having second thoughts. I would gladly go back to being an unknown, Great Mandalore. I prefer the talk of warriors to the endless jabbering of politics. <laughs> the curse of being skilled at both, you old rancor. <laughs> so you're the one. Not sure if I should call you commander. Not necessary. The need for a commander is done. Understood. I like to be clear on these things. Helps me get your measure. The fact is, Darth Knox, I only know your reputation. I don't know you. It's my job to take a hard look at anyone this close to Mandalore. My kind and yours have worked together a long time, Sith. As a result, we've both grown powerful. I don't understand your power, but you've got more in your two hands than a carrier full of heavy artillery. You always speak this plainly to Mandalore. I speak my mind, that's all. She's had a dozen occasions to stick a knife in my ribs for insubordination. But I'm still here. Bootlickers are only good for licking boots. So what happens now? I've seen your face. Looked into your eyes. That's what I wanted. Satisfied? For now. Good. I'm sure you have more important things to do. Some clan grumbling to track down. More than the usual complaints. Ras and I will check into it. Jakaya out. Ras, 
His brother. They're a family of Mandalorians. Lost a sister a few years back. Hmm. Something wrong. That's the first time he's mentioned a clan issue. He oversees a lot of the day-to-day -day details without a word. Let Jakaya find out more. If he's one of your best, trust him to do his job. You're right. It's hard to sit back. But he's better at rooting out trouble. He kept an assassin's knife out of my gut more than once. You're a leader. How would you deal with unrest in the ranks? If a group has a problem, it's usually for a reason. Maybe they see something you don't. We have more in common than I thought. Mandalorians must be allowed to speak out, to think for themselves, to be effective. Chikaya demands order, everything working together as a whole. I understand, and it keeps it all running, but I don't work that way. Well, looks like I've got reports to review on escort missions we've been overseeing. Chikaya snuck them into the transmission. Sneaky Chikar. I'll leave you to it. I don't know about you, but I'm actually very much enjoying every single one of these little interactions here. We're getting a massive amount of overview of these characters that we haven't seen, or at least I haven't seen, in many years. And let's face it, Shea Vizsla was actually one of the characters that was added in very late in my time of playing. And I basically had no time at all to kind of get to know her or anything like that. So it's actually really cool to see what she's all about and to see the people that she works with and so on and so forth. And it's also wonderful to see Scourge and Kira again as well. Because as far as I remember, Kira actually wasn't... Um, I, I know we saw Scourge in one of the previous um, little expansion update things but Kira was still missing in action, so, or at least I seem to recall that. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm misremembering, but anyway, let's continue onward. Did you learn anything from the clans? Nothing I haven't mentioned before. A lot of heated words. Some are saying Mandalorians are just glorified couriers. Still unable to see past their next fight. All tactics and no strategy. However restless you are in the position, Mandalore, you sound like a leader. I sound angry. My blaster is still a better negotiator than I will ever be. What about the escort runs? Silence. But only a fool would believe they haven't heard something. What happened? Some of the cargo ships we were looking after ran into trouble. Mostly scouts sniffing around. But one exchanged fire. We've been looking into it. Jagaya. Dark Knox. We meet again. I've been keeping an eye on you. And? Mandalore was right to stand by your side. I do what I can. Modesty. Hmm. Tell me more about these cargo runs. Who would attack Mandalorian ships? That's the real question. They're well equipped and they know our methods. You need to get ahead of this. Everyone knows the Mandalorians are looking after some very valuable goods. Very tempting. Agreed. But it's not common bandits or even an ambitious cartel. This feels different. Like they're testing our defenses. I know you object, Mandalore, but we must look closer to home. I don't object. I just want to be sure. Would some of the clans really go that far? I'm not ruling it out. Like I said, there were some heated words. Like Shay said, we need to know more before we jump to conclusions. I understand. But something is making my trigger finger itch. We should have clamped down harder on the clans when we had the chance. The wound has festered. No, Mandalorians aren't droids. We're best when we don't have some restraining bolt on our neck, even if it costs us. Agreed. You go too far, and you risk losing control. And sometimes, too much freedom leads to chaos and destruction. Enough. We gave our word to protect those shipments, and we will. Understood, Mandalore. I'll see if I can draw the enemy out. Can't fight what we can't see. If I'm lucky, I'll make them mad enough to come out and play. Jakaya out. I'd prefer a fight to all this sneaking about. Agreed. Keep me informed. Count on it. 
Ah, I see they still haven't fixed that wonderful bug with the cloaks. Did you see that? Yeah, in the cutscene when we were just running out of there, the cloak was phasing through our front. Oh yeah, that. Mm. I remember that bug from a long time ago and apparently it's still here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh well, never mind. Anyway, here we go. We've got another one. <laughs> this is actually pretty fun. In my opinion, I think this is actually really riveting, but obviously if you prefer a little bit of combat here and there, interspersed between story missions well i'm i'm sorry i can't do much about that we're basically just you know going from point a to point b at the moment and uh, that's what's going to happen after many years of not logging in T7, you found the ship with Satil Shan and her students. Finally. Great work. We need those coordinates now. There isn't a moment to spare. Fall back. We have the coordinates. Leave it to us. Ah, we need to get there now. The servants have found their master. The servants? I can't believe there are any of them left. The servants? They're the Sith Emperor's worst fanatics. They don't even have names. Just Servant 1, Servant 2, and so on. Each time we think we've killed the last of them, more always appear. We have to get moving. If the servants are involved, this is even worse than we thought. Could they be the ones who changed the ship's course to begin with? I suppose it's possible, but they were coming out of hyperspace. It seemed like they just arrived. Either way, we'll need to get there fast. I'll get a shuttle prepped. Meet me as soon as you're ready. One way or another, this ends today. All right, I am very much looking forward to this. And we now need to meet with Lana once again. Okay, it's going to be fun to see her, actually. It's been, well, years. And actual, in uh, not even in-game years. It's been real years. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Anyway, uh, let me see here. How do I mount up again? There we go. We got my festive torn torn once again. Can you imagine? Look at this. Can you? When did I even get this thing? I don't even know. I don't even remember. But it was a while ago. That's for sure. Anyway, Alliance War Room. Let's go and speak to Lana Benico. And uh, I'm, I'm not even sure what, why we're speaking to her. But I'm going to assume we're going to say, come with me. Come and help me out or something. Is that T7? Okay, wait a minute. This... <laughs> <laughs> that's wait a minute is that the actual t7 is that the actual t7 that we just were speaking to in the ship there well that's a bit of a continuity problem isn't it oh well never mind not that big a deal i guess i realize this is something you must do without me but I couldn't let you go without at least wishing you luck. The way this is unfolding, I'm completely disheartened. I never dreamed we'd face Valkorion again, and now you must do so without my help. I hope you know that if I could, I would be by your side for this. I always appreciate your concern, but I hate making you worry. This will be over soon, I promise. I don't doubt it. Just stay safe. Good, you're still here. I was hoping to catch you before you took off. What is it, Theron? I hope there's room for one more on that shuttle, because I'm going with you. I appreciate the thought, but are you sure? 
I know it's risky, but Satil is in trouble. I have to help. I lost one parent. I'm not just standing by and letting the other one go. Not if there's something I could do to save her. Whatever the Emperor's doing, I can resist it. I was on Zyost. He didn't control me then. Sure as hell won't let him affect me now. Sorry to interrupt your send-off, but we need to get going. I'm going too. That is really not a good idea. Kira is correct. Too many are already infected by Tenebrae's weapon. Bringing you is too great a risk. That's not your call to make. The only orders I'm following are the commanders. All right then. What do you think? I wasn't expecting anyone to offer to come with us. Especially since we don't truly know what we're up against. We're going to need all the support we can get. Thank you. If that is your decision. It is. Then let us proceed as carefully as possible. This changes the entire plan. I wish you all good luck, and I'll keep our forces here on high alert. Should you need us, just say the word. We appreciate the support, Lana. Thank you. Whatever you need. Enough talk. Let us depart before we lose the droid. We're here, scanning the transport. Power fluctuations, system failures. Looks like the engines are out of commission. There's a ship parked in the hangar bay, but I can't tell if it's T7 shuttle or the servants. There's our answer. We'll have to go in through one of the airlocks, but we can't connect while they're shooting at us. Leave them to me. Locked on and sealed. We're ready to go in. Your Jedi friends will be all right. You can trust me. I hope so. Well, now I have a big problem, because on the one hand, I am a dark side, uh, well, I'm a dark side character, you know, my guy is literally a pure dark side character, and now I am going to have a decision to make later on, where we're going to have to, well, decide whether the uh, Jedi die or not. I can only assume that to be the case, at least. Anyway. That's going to be it for this episode. Yeah, otherwise next time we're going to be investigating the ship and hopefully being able to find uh, Satil uh, all by herself, uh, maybe with other people, maybe safe, maybe not. I'm not entirely sure, but I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.